What's up guys, welcome back to the Monster Bass Channel. So today we're out on the Tennessee River and we're gonna be doing some flipping and some pitching. And we're gonna be fishing the Tokyo rig today. You know, this is a really cool presentation. It's, a, it's kind of a new trend in the fishing industry. And it's something that has fascinated me because it takes something that I love to do, like flipping a Texas rig, and just transforms it a little bit. A different presentation, a different way to show those fish, something similar to something we all like to do, but just in a different way. And so we're here and we got some beautiful grass behind us on this beautiful lake. We're gonna go flip and we're gonna go pitching and we're gonna see what we can get done. So let's, uh, let's get this thing rigged up and let's talk through some of my favorite things to do with the Tokyo rig, how to flip it, how to pitch it, get into all the nitty gritty details. All right, so today I'm gonna to be flipping a half ounce weight. And the reason I'm doing that is because it's what I'm comfortable with. I mean, 99% of the time when I'm flipping, whether it's a Texas rig, a Tokyo rig, a jig, I'm gonna be flipping a half ounce weight. And it's just because I know what my rod, my reel, my line, how it's gonna to react to that half ounce weight. And so it keeps me efficient on the water. It keeps everything consistent in my box and in my boat so that I can pick up any flipping stick that I have and just go fish and be super efficient with it. And you know, looking today, I'm not gonna be punching any of this vegetation where we actually fish in the grass edges. So if I was gonna be punching this vegetation or I was gonna be fishing a little bit deeper, I might bump that weight up, you know, something three quarter, even an ounce in some cases, and maybe even switch up to a braid rod. But today, just flipping these grass edges and knowing how I like to fish and my efficiency on the water with my rod and reel and my Tokyo rig, I'm gonna go a half ounce weight. So just adjust your weight to the depth of water you're fishing, the cover that you're fishing around, and what you're comfortable with and what keeps you efficient on the water. And so just like with your weight, take your favorite bait and rig it up. Today we're fishing with this little bait right here, a little awesome creature bait that you guys are gonna be receiving in the box. And so, you know, it's one of those deals that you can fish so many different baits on this Tokyo rig. And it's what makes it so cool is that you can take your favorite creature bait, your favorite swim bait, your favorite whatever bait. If it's a piece of plastic, you can put it on this Tokyo rig and you can fish it. So. Let's get this thing rigged up. Let's go fish some of this grass and see if we can catch a big one. Yeah, you know, in a situation like this, there's just so much to look at, right? And for me, a guy who's a little bit ADHD, <laughs> it can be a little overwhelming because you want to flip everything because everything looks good. But what I've found fishing, as long as I have, is the isolated pieces of this grass, or, you know, little isolated patches, or anywhere there's a little dip in or a point out, and that's where those fish are gonna be. And I mean, of course, you can go through here and you can you know, meticulously pick all this stuff apart, which if you're in a kayak or something like that, you know, when I'm fishing a kayak tournament and I'm isolated this area, I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna pick all of this apart. But like when I'm in my boat, I wanna cover water. You know, and again, I said earlier that I'm fishing this half ounce, half ounce weight for efficiency for me. And so if I'm gonna be efficient and I'm gonna be faster, I'm wanting to hit the little isolated clumps of grass. I'm wanting to hit those little points out, those little dips ins and, uh, and just you know, really focus on that stuff to try to get those fish to eat. And two, the fish inherently are gonna sit there, right? It's an ambush point. You know, if there's a point out in the grass, those fish can sit behind that grass and with something that looks like this little creature bait comes swimming by, looks like a little bluegill or something like that, they're gonna rush out and they're gonna grab it. And for the most part, with this bite, it is gonna be a reaction bite. A lot of people think, you know, if it's a soft plastic, if it's a Texas rig, if it's a Tokyo rig, I'm gonna be dragging this thing really slow like a jig, and I'm gonna like have to let it hang in their face. But for the most part, you know, with a bite like this, it's gonna drop by their face, they're gonna rush out, they're gonna grab it, and they're gonna react to it just like they would a crankbait. It's just instead of a crankbait and, you know, leaning into them, you're gonna jack their face with a four-rod hook and, and bring them out of this grass. All right, so as you guys can see there, that weight has got some grass on it. And the reason for that is you get bottom separation with the Tokyo rig, which is unique from the Texas rig. Whereas the Texas rig, you got that weight right on the front of that bait, it's gonna fall down in there, it's gonna be all one big package. Whereas with the Tokyo rig, that little wire leader, as soon as you put tension on that, you guys can see that bait pops right up there. And so on a silty bottom, like we're fishing here with all this grass and all this muck and stuff, when that thing hits the bottom, that little bit of bottom separation, as small as it is, can make a huge difference in the fish actually seeing it. And it's also a very unique presentation in the fact that unlike a Texas rig that's all going down in their one compact package, with this Tokyo rig, that little bit of bottom separation can be huge in getting those fish to bite. You know, the versatility of this bait is pretty fascinating because you can go from being in two foot of water, you know, flipping those grass mats and kind of flipping those edges like we were doing to out here a little bit deeper water. You know, we're sitting in eight, nine foot of water, 
flipping some of these grass edges, some of these grass beds. You know, and we're really essentially in the same depth that we were before. But if you wanted to, to have that versatility, you can take this rig offshore. You can fish it deeper. You don't have to sit down and retie. All you have to do is bend that you know, wire out, slip on a new weight and bend it back up. You know, and our buddy Mikey did a video yesterday of fishing this thing on a ledge. And so the Tokyo rig just has an immense amount of versatility in that way that it's not just a flipping bait. It's not just a punching bait. It's not just, you know, a simple bait that does one thing and one thing only. It's a bait that does a whole bunch of different things, including fishing deep, fishing shallow, flipping, pitching, and all kinds of different stuff. And so, you know, a Tokyo rig's cool. It's cool in that way. I think it's a very versatile bait for all anglers, whether you're in the kayak, you're on the bank, you're in the boat, Whatever it is, a Tokyo rig is something you can rig up, you can keep it rigged up, and you can go fish a bunch of different situations with it effectively. All right, so the rod and reel I'm fishing this thing on is my flipping setup. It's a 7.6 medium heavy fast action rod. I got some 20 pound fluorocarbon seven gear ratio reel. I mean, that's kind of my go-to flipping setup pretty much anywhere that I'm going. You know, the only difference that I might make to this is switching over to some braid. If I decided to use this thing like as a punching bait and actually punch into that grass, because that braid is actually gonna cut that vegetation where this fluorocarbon is just gonna dig into it. But when I'm out here just kind of fishing this sparser vegetation, you know, looking for these hard spots that we're looking for in these grass patches, this 20 pound fluorocarbon is gonna do everything that I need it to do. And then that rod, I like a little bit longer rod for myself, just so if I do hit one, you know, say it's in that grass or it tries to take me in that grass, I can have that leverage to bring that fish up out of there. And then the seven gear ratio reel is for the simple fact of, you have one hit it, run at you, you'll be able to catch up with them, be able to get a good hook into those fish. Because a lot of the times, especially when you're flipping or in a situation like this where we're flipping these grass edges offshore, looking for these hard spots, you know, there'll be two or three bass in an area. And when they get to competing with each other, they'll grab something, they'll just take off running with it to try to get away from the other bass because bass will try to steal food from other bass. It's, it's really kind of a crazy thing to see, especially when you're on schooling bass. You know, in this time of year, summer post-spawn, it doesn't matter if you're in two foot of water or 20 foot of water, a lot of these fish are gonna be schooled up, grouped together. And so if one grabs it and takes off running, that seven gear ratio reel allows you to really pick up that line and hit them hard to make sure that you're getting a good hook in their face. And you know, when you're fishing from the bank or fishing from the kayak, that can be huge because you're at an automatic disadvantage. You know, that fish, you're either gonna move with it in a kayak or you're not able to, you know, maneuver around as much on the bank. And so being able to pick up that line and hit them good and get a good hook into them can be a detriment to getting more fish into the boat, into the kayak, into the bank.